Good, good afternoon, good evening, even late evening for some, good morning for others. We are so pleased to welcome you to the opening of this uh, very important conference that has been in the making for months under the theme of no peace without women. What are women bringing to peace processes, conflict uh, prevention and human security? My name is Carolyn Hanshin, based in Geneva. Uh, I am the president of the Women's Federation for World Peace Europe, coordinator for the development of this international association of first ladies for world peace in uh, Europe and Middle East. And I'm the president of the NGO Committee on the Status of Women. Um, I would um, I have to begin first with a few practical points so everyone is well installed. Uh, you will see at the bottom of your screen, there are several icons. One is Q&A, questions and answers. One is the chat box and one is in for interpretation. So we have interpretation into seven languages. It's better instead of clicking for origin, original, it's better that you just right away click whatever language you would like to uh, listen in on, which you can change as you go. Uh, also chat box is for chatting among yourselves related to our event, hopefully. And uh, also the, the bios will be put in the chat as the speakers begin uh, their presentations. Question and answers will be open throughout the event. Uh, you can put in your, your questions and they will be relayed to the to the, uh, the speakers or the session facilitator. <clears throat> I am so happy <clears throat> to open this important and I believe very relevant event and series of roundtable discussions. I have to begin by saying thank you to our organizing team, uh, Women's Federation for World Peace in Europe and Middle East, the International Association of First Ladies for Peace, which is part of the Universal Peace Federation, the Rene Moawad Foundation, and Mrs. Her, Her Excellency Madam Naila Moawad is actually co-host with Women's Federation for this event. We also want to thank the supporting organizations, UN Women, uh, especially UN Women Office in Geneva, uh, the NGO Committee on the Status of Women in Geneva, and Seroptimist International. So thank you to everyone for your support. The very early preparations for this event began soon after the invasion of Ukraine, gathering first ladies from Lebanon, Cyprus, and Albania, as well as our UNECE head who is here present, also Madam uh, Sunita Messi uh, from uh, Albania, former uh, Deputy Prime Minister, also Her Excellency Anneli Yatinmaki from Finland, former, also former Prime Minister in Finland, uh, as well as our vast network of Women's Federation leaders throughout the region. We got together and we all shared a common indignation and a common thought or determination. Can we as women not put our best minds, our hearts and our experience together to set a new pattern of righting injustices and solving disagreements without perpetrating further injustice, further violence and enmity, and in this case, actually leading to war again. Could we not decide together that unabated violent confrontation and war is not an inevitable outcome of deteriorating circumstances among humans? the damage, destruction, death, generations of trauma on both sides or all sides of the conflict warrant us trying harder. Civil society led campaigns have convinced people that landmines were not an admissible and permanent weapon of war, that cigarette smoking in public places was not the right of the individual. UNESCO's Culture of Peace program, dear Ingeborg Brynes, so grateful to have you here, uh, led a global campaign to tap into that mindset with incredible success. The SDGs support the same goal from another side and actually all of us here 
are working from different angles on this topic. So um, through our prominent speakers today from the United Nations, European regional institutions, national governments, educators, academia, private sector, and NGOs, we will learn what difference women are already making in preventive diplomacy, in neutralizing triggers that, that, that lead to violent conflict, and in how we could work more effectively and in greater solidarity, drawing on previous successes. A good portion of my own personal confidence for this topic comes from my experience in preventive diplomacy and neutralizing triggers that lead to heightened tensions as mother of a large family. I think many of you might know what I'm talking about. But beyond skills, probably the success here lies in the commitment, the love, belief that these perpetrators, my children in this case, are capable of much better. Herein lies the importance of, I think, this partnership between civil society, people, individuals, families, communities, and international institutions. So this theme, No Peace Without Women, is a slogan that we hope to continue with, and from my view has two meanings. One is a call to empower women and girls with tools and opportunities to be leaders and contributors in flourishing communities, but also a call to women to unite to solve the current global disorder, the silent acceptance of a confusion of priorities. With that in mind, our last speaker today will present a proposal for a project, a commitment to healing and sustainable development in Ukraine, a small seed to keep up our momentum together, hopefully, for the larger goal. So with a remarkable group of speakers who work on and who live these issues daily, women and men who are peacemakers in their personal lives, I will introduce our upcoming speakers. So let me introduce Midi Toma, Vice President of the Women's Federation in Europe and President in the UK. Um, she will inform about an initiative of a humanitarian project for Ukraine. The floor is yours, Niti. Thank you very much, Marcia. This has been a really wonderful, wonderful conference, I must say. And all the panelists have touched on so many important issues relating to women, like breaking the glass ceilings and also being patient as well. There is always a time and a place for women to shine and also touching on the human rights issues and women's equality. So it's been a very uh, enriching uh, conference so far. And, as, and I would like to just move on to another point of humanitarian work. Uh, as much as we want to talk about these uh, issues, we do need to go out and help our, our brothers and sisters who are in need, who are going through either conflict or, or in the middle of a conflict situation. So the Women's Federation here in Europe have decided to um, support and initiate a project for uh, the, the, the situation in, in Ukraine. And um, it's, it's in this segment, we will be exploring that and we will be sharing the, the project. And I'll be introducing the, the humanitarian aid project, which is being launched today. And, um, it is a project of the Women's Federation Europe and Middle East. Uh, its aim is to, to help the victims of war. The project's goals are to provide psychological and humanitarian and also uh, medical aid for families who have suffered from the war in, in Ukraine. Not just, just this war, recent war, but also the war that had happened earlier as well. So it's like a continuation and um, this project will be introduced by one of my colleagues who has been actually based in the Ukraine since the war has happened. And she's been very courageous with a number of our colleagues who stayed in Ukraine and faced many, many challenges. And even at the risk of their life, they stayed in the Ukraine. So I would like to introduce my dear friend and colleague, uh, Mrs. Anna Kalmatska who is the Vice President of uh, Women's Federation in Ukraine. And she's uh, been working tirelessly and 
un unselfishly and actively working for a lot of public projects and especially in the in a charitable se charitable sector and in the cultural uh, programs that she set up and she has been recognized by the local governments and also national governments for her awards and have been really um, honored for her work and outreach together with her team in the Ukraine. So let us welcome um, Mrs. Anna, uh, who she will, she will explain a little bit uh, through a PowerPoint uh, as we launch this uh, humanitarian program. Thank you. Over to you, Anna. Yes, thank you, Diemiti. Thank you, everyone. And uh, many greetings from Ukraine. Yeah. <clears throat> So first of all, I want to thank Women's Federation for World Peace Europe for its constant support and concern for our situation in Ukraine, and of course for this opportunity to speak today at such honorable meeting. And I'm here today with our wonderful team of Women's Federation for World Peace Ukraine. Though the majority of our members became refugees or internally displaced persons, we haven't stopped our activity since the outbreak of the war. And our work actually has become even larger as we got hundreds of requests for help from many people who faced the horror and the consequences of war. I'm also honored to introduce today our head of the board, Mrs. Tatiana Kotseba, who has been staying in the capital of Ukraine, the city of Kyiv, since the war started. The mother of five children, winner of more than 50 different awards from state and public organizations. Mrs. Kotseba has been the head of the organization since its foundation in Ukraine in 2007. The project that I will introduce today is aimed at providing psychological, humanitarian, and medical aid to families who suffered from the war and who are staying in rural areas in the Kyiv region. We're going to reach at least 100 people from the needed segments of the population. Uh, more than half of our beneficiaries are displaced from places of hostilities. They move to small villages where they found simple housing and difficult living conditions. Having faced the horror of war, many of them are traumatized and need psychological support. Very often these are large families, the elderly and people with disabilities, and there are obstacles to their movement to places of assistance. They do not have access to information or to legal or social assistance, and simply they don't have finances. Many times they cannot even apply for status as internally displaced persons. The solution for such people is for help to come to them. All these people are wards of the Ministry of Veteran Affairs, namely of the Kyiv Svetoshin Center for Social and Psychological Rehabilitation in the city of Boyaka. The center has been our long-term partner since 2015. It is a state institution that was originally created to help people affected by the consequences of Chernobyl disaster. And since 2014, it has been reclassified as a center for helping internally displaced persons. It has vast experience in providing various kinds of assistance to people in need. The director of the center is an honored worker in the social sphere of Ukraine, the nominee of the Woman of the Year Award given by our organization, and an honored member of Women's Federation for World Peace Ukraine. How will the project proceed? The multidisciplinary team of specialists of the Kyiv Svetoshin Center for Social and Psychological Rehabilitation in the city of Boyaka will go to rural areas of the Kyiv region to provide on-site psychological, medical, consulting, and humanitarian assistance to the above categories. The team will consist of a professional psychologist, doctor, social worker, lawyer, and others. This emergency team will go one or two times a week to different villages and deliver to those in need. A notfall team, that in the ländlichen Gegenden geht. So, 
people in remote, I have to say that people in remote villages in what conditions, uh, they not only have difficulty accessing information and medical care, but also lack of basic things like food, clothes, and shoes. Therefore, a mandatory component of the project is the provision of humanitarian assistance and supplies necessities to at least 100 people. So what do we need in order to implement the project? As you can see, we need 15 euros for psychological consultation for each person and uh, 136 euros to form a humanitarian aid package for each person. The package will consist of food, medicine, clothes, footwear and blankets. And we also need about 6 1,194 euros for the project's operating expenses. The total amount of the project is 19,794 euros. Uh, I also want to point out that Women's Federation for World Peace Ukraine has had a huge experience in helping IDP since 2014. And since the war's outbreak on February 24th, we have held dozens of various activities, helping refugees and IDPs, providing assistance with medications, food and bedding for more than 100 internally displaced people and helping more than 50 Ukrainian families to evacuate abroad from places of hostilities. Many of these actions became possible thanks to our partners in Europe. So I just want to use this chance to thank the Women's Federation for World Peace of Europe, the Women's Federation of Belgium, France, and the United Kingdom for their donations and the various activities carried out by them on the field to support Ukraine. To conclude my presentation, I want to introduce their project coordinator from the Ukrainian side, Mrs. Lyudmila Grobovenka a Women's Federation Ukraine member, public figure, and the owner of a private collection of Ukrainian scarf and towels as the symbol of mother's love. So we will be really grateful for your support and we're open to cooperation. Thank you for your attention. And in the end, this is their PayPal information as well as bank information to send the donations. Yeah, thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, Anna, for yeah for your appeal yeah we will definitely support this uh, program and um just want to recognize these nations that have opened their doors to allow you know displaced people and refugees who have fled from war like poland and uh, moldova i know our chapter in moldova has worked tirelessly to um, supply foods and also to uh, give shelter and accommodation for refugees who have fled this uh, terrible situation in the ukraine but I'd just like to add my own experience when I visited the Ukraine in uh, 2018 uh, with some no number of our colleagues from France and also Portugal and Netherlands. Um, we, we were invited by yourself to visit the rehabilitation center that you mentioned in your PowerPoint. It was quite traumatizing, not traumatizing, but it was quite a, um, effect, affected my, me a lot actually when you, you kind of showed us around to these different rooms. There was a room for children, you know, rehabilitation center for a room for children with toys and um, therapists there. And then also we had a round table discussion where we could meet mothers who came, um, who had been through this uh, difficult situation of the conflict. And uh, I just remember one woman there and that um, when I saw her face and when she tried to speak, she could hardly talk actually about, about, about her experiences that she had been through um, by, by losing her children, her, her, everything that she cherished, her children and her husband. And you could see the, the pain etched in her face and also the fear that was embedded in her. And this, uh, this center is so essential so needed actually and uh, I can never forget this woman's face but also at the same time there was a meeting that you organized in the parliament the Ukraine parliament where you invited us and there was women from a war that was happened in Bosnia and it was the same kind of pain these women were sharing you know it was like it so deep and dirt coming out of a, a place that you can't imagine that a, a woman would have to go and so I, I was just so uh, moved actually and I really want to we really want to here in Europe advocate and this program this humanitarian program and also at the same time we would like to seek for partners to work with us 
the more the more we can hold hands together and really um, help our people. It's so important. Yeah, thank you so much for and also being staying in the Ukraine during this continuously difficult time during the conflict and uh, just the other day we were having a, a, a team meeting and um, Anna was in in um, you know just could see her face because it was like the lights had gone off there was no power and just you, you 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 just feel so grateful for what you have but there are so many people who suffer in so many ways so thank you so much Anna and your team yeah, um, so please, at the end, we will put um, the slide with all the donation uh, details. So please go ahead and uh, out of your heart to give something. So on, uh, as, as we are um, coming to the conclusion of this uh, wonderful webinar, I would like to say a few thank yous to our wonderful speakers, especially to our, um, to Mrs. Caroline Hanchin and also Dr. J Pres President Julia Moon for, spearheading this conference actually it's been incredible beyond what we imagined and to have such wonderful panelists and also um, our first ladies who gave such uh, incredible contributions at this time and all the dignitaries who who really um, offered so many insights that perhaps we didn't know and especially taking these high offices and breaking many barriers you know that uh, perhaps we don't see but you know enduring and going through a lot actually so we're very grateful for that and I did feel there was a silver lining through the whole of this program that education is very important uh, for our own um, um, for our, our youth for the future but also for ourselves to elevate ourselves as women and that we can take a greater role and greater opportunity as you, as you know, uh, our queen has passed here because I'm based in the UK. And the uh, one point that she said that women, uh, at least herself, she said she has to be visible, that people know that she's there. And I felt very much echoing what she feels, you know, that women have to be visible, that they are there and they have something to contribute. And I felt all the contribution that everybody gave was so meaningful and nothing is ever lost, even if no one sees it, it's never lost. It's always, it always contributes to the greater. So on that point, I would like to thank everybody and also our organizing team and our key partners, uh, the International Association for First Ladies and also uh, Rena Mawad Foundation. Can we take a picture? And also, um, yeah, please go ahead. I just continue to finish my, um, and also to, for our supporting organization, the UN Women, and uh, the UN NGO CSW or Geneva and also Sharop Cities International. It's been a wonderful uh, conference and yeah, we will take a photo now. And, and also just a huge thank you to the, all the participants in the audience, even though we can't see you, but we know you're there and, and we appreciate your, your uh, spending time with us. And I hope that uh, you could gain a lot from this conference. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think at one point we had almost 300 on ours on the Zoom call and most stayed. I mean, not so many dropped out. But besides that, we were live streaming in how many, how many different. Uh, Good. Uh, Lily, do you know, can you say something mm. about that? it went to Facebook Women's Federation, also to FFWP, UPF, and I believe it was planned to go to Albania Facebook as well uh -huh. in Albanian. So we will, a report will be made of this and we will post it on our website. So I think you can, you can go back to that. Also the recording of this will need a little bit of editing, but we will post that after for you. So from my side too, just to say thank you so much for everyone. It was an incredible effort and so much beside, behind the scenes hard work. Thank you to the interpreters. Also, thank you very much. Please turn your Cameras on if you can, if you, and, and we can take a screenshot. Okay. So one, two, three. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Sunita. Yes. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. To everyone. Bye bye. Thank you very much. This is the details, don't forget. <laughs> yes. Which we will also put on our 
our website, huh? Yeah, yeah. You can find it. Okay, thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. Yeah, thanks for staying so long. <laughs> it was long, but... <laughs>